morning, everybody. This uh, beautiful day in Puerto Rico. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the solar equipment that we've installed on our uh, Morgan 414 and uh, explain to you how we did it, what we purchased, and how you can add or increase the solar on your boat as well. Um, so we're gonna start on the top sides, go over our panels, the selections that we made. So on top of our hard top, we bought um, new power solar panels. They're 200 watts a piece. There's one on each side for 400 watts of solar. And the two panels together cost us about 380 some dollars. We installed uh, a tower with dinghy davits. Um, it's tower in a box. And um, we put one on both of our boats. I love them. But by having the tower, we were able to install uh, three solar panels across the top of it. Uh, they're 100 watts a piece and they're Renogy. Um, we got them um, through Amazon. They basically are about a dollar a watt. The one thing that if you have a boat and you already have solar panels, um, you're gonna wanna check your panels because the watts and the amount of watts isn't as important as the voltage. Whatever panels you have, you want to match the voltage as closely as you can. If you put a panel, if you have panels that have 54 volts and you add a panel that has 17 volts, your charge controller is going to start reading funny. So match your panels if you already have them. And if you don't, buy panels that are similar. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the wiring for just a second. Um, solar panels come pre-wired. So you can buy these connectors. Um, I'll show them to you. We gonna have some in the package. Basically, you're gonna bring the hot wires from the panels in, pigtail them to each other, and then run your electrical line, which is only positive and negative, to your charge controller. Very, very simple. Uh, connectors come with double O-rings um, and they are waterproof, but you know, we keep everything tucked in underneath. Uh, so that pretty much covers the actual panels that are outside. So once again, we have two 200 watt panels on top of the hard top, three panels on the back of the boat. So this boat has a total of 700 watts of solar. Uh, one other cool thing that we found is when you're cruising and it's you're on anchor, it's kind of hot at night. Uh, we found these Milwaukee fans. We have all Milwaukee tools on our boats. Um, and these fans will run 17 hours on a single charge on one and eight hours on two. These babies really blow. And we'll have the information on the Milwaukee their drills, drivers, vacuums, fans, all of them use the same exact charger. So uh, it's easy for us to interchange batteries and keep all of our equipment running top notch. Big, big Milwaukee fans. Okay. Okay, so here we are um, inside the sailboat. We're in the galley area. Uh, so what uh, we're gonna point out here is that one, we have a angle fridge and freezer. Uh, we have a secondary angle freezer that we plug in periodically. Our charging stations are all the way through the boat. We have 12 volts for um, USBs and 12 volts for bullets. So charging your phones, laptops, tablets, whatever. Um, all of this runs off of our solar system. Our fridge and freezer run off of 12 volt. They're on the solar system. And, uh, okay, so then once we've moved past the 12 volt plugs, uh, our boat is wired for 110. Uh, we also have USB ports on the receptacles. Uh, so when we turn the inverter on, when we're not on shore power and we turn the inverter on, then all of our receptacles, everything on the boat runs 110. Okay, so on this side, um, behind the dinette, is where I put the brains of the boat. So this is our 110 panel. Um, we're running on short power right now. 
And you can see we don't even have our battery chargers aren't even turned on. We're still running off of solar. We plug into 110 just so we can run our air conditioners and cool the boat. Uh, this is our 12 volt panel, which carries our refrigerators, our lights, our water pressure, everything that we need. Uh, right now we are, we're at 13.89 volts on our batteries and it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, this switch over here is, we're on shore power. If we turn the switch straight up, everything is off. And if we turn it to the other side, then we're switching over to our inverter when we're not on shore power. This is our inverter uh, control panel. And basically it's just an on and off button. So when we're away from the dock, we switch over and anytime we need 110, we just touch that button and the whole system comes alive. All of our fridges and freezers, our microwaves, and anything else that we need to do. Our inverter, we'll see it in a few minutes, is a 3,500 watt inverter, 7,000 peak. So it can do 7,000 uh, watts for a startup and then it drops back down to 3,500, which is plenty of power to run most household things. So also the um, our inverter is strong enough to run our, uh, this is a new wave. Uh, they, they cook with induction, they're fantastic. They do draw a lot of power, uh, but they have a, a power setting that you can switch it down to 600, 800, 1000, or 1600 watts. So if you're running off the inverter, we just lower the wattage setting uh, to a lower set, and that's fine. Typically when we are traveling and doing long hauls and trips, uh, we have behind here, we have a alcohol stove that we just bring out and we set it up so that we're saving power. And this is the aft cabin head. Now on the other side of this wall is our engine room. Our batteries are right there. So I mounted our charge controller in the bathroom. So it, uh, it's cooler in here. Uh, this is aluminum uh, with fins so it keeps itself cool. This is the brains to it. Um, it is spelled EP EVER. Uh, this charge controller, the solar panels are, I'm running them through a breaker, and then they come straight into our charge controller. This is the brain for the charge controller. I can line it up. Um, our batteries are almost full. We got a little smiley face, and we were at 13. Six just a few minutes ago and our battery bank is already now up to 14.1 volts we're taking in um, 14 and a half amps and everything's working perfectly our house batteries they're Duracell 6 volt um, so we connect the positive to the negative which hooks the two batteries together makes it a 12 volt uh, then we're left with a positive and negative to run to our bus bars and power our system. The, uh, each of these batteries are 220 amp hours. I have two sets of them, so this boat has 880 amp hours. And then we run from the batteries down, and this is our power inverter. Let me get a better shot. This is our power inverter. Uh, you can see it's 3,500 watts, 7,000 surge. I want to point out um, on a power on an inverter is that you want to make sure that the inverter is a pure sine wave. Uh, there's a there's a modified that will damage your electronics and it can damage even motors. Uh, pure shine wave is this puts out a better current than electricity coming off the grid the wavelength on these things are perfect and when you're purchasing one for your system you notice that 
it does have plugs that you can just plug into now that divides the 3500 watts so each one each set of these is not going to be 3500 watts you want one that has the front plate you can bring a power wire into it and then wire it straight to your panel so I brought a wire in it's wired directly to the inverter I'm not using the plugs on the inverter and it runs straight to my electric panel so I get the full 3500 watts is not being divided between the receptacles this is really important because now when I turn my inverter on with the push of a button um, it powers the entire boat instantly pure sine wave costs just a little bit more than the modified but it really takes care of everything on this boat beautifully all right so here we have um, a few products that we purchase and use one is the actual uh, cable for solar panels so this is made for solar panels the cable then goes into the fittings so here we have a male and a female um, you can buy splitters that are have length to them or you can buy splitters that are just single blocks and basically the uh, it's got fins it's got a seal you put them together they lock and that is waterproof it has seals in these caps where the cable is going to go into uh, the fitting and you screw it down the o-ring seal the cable is good and it will not come apart we buy here's another set uh, they come color coded so you know that you're working on the positive side of your panels and batteries and the negative side and with these fittings You buy them by the bag, they're really inexpensive and they have all the pieces and parts. So these crimp onto the end of a stripped cable and then you just put the parts together. They come out looking just exactly like that. So putting solar panels together is actually really easy. You're just going to be stripping wire, putting the uh, fittings on plugging them together and you are you're making ground these we we get all this through amazon we will put a link at the bottom of the page for all of the parts and pieces that we've shown you along with um the prices may have changed a little bit uh we'll go over some of that our our entire system and even we have a lot of leftover parts uh, the solar panels, the charge controllers, the cables, the inverter, everything that we've shown you from one end of this system to the other, we are at about $2,250 right now. And that is, and it, that's the whole system done. Inverter, everything. So it's a great investment. Um, we sell this boat from the Florida Keys to Puerto Rico. We got had to stay in the Dominican for twice for almost a week each time. So the boat was not on a dock and not on shore power for 28 days and it ran everything on the boat flawlessly. We didn't have any power issues. We had fridges and freezers. We had lights, um, all of our Electronics, our GPS's, everything ran 24 hours a day, and um, autopilot. Autopilot. Oh yeah, that's autopilot's a pretty good pull. Uh, so the autopilot was steering the boat, GPS's, fridges and freezers, and we did all of that off of this simple system. Um, don't make it too hard. Uh, it's really straightforward. It's easy. Actually, it's kind of fun, like putting everything together. 
And when you plug it in and it works, you will be satisfied. Thanks, Jay.